بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه أستعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين New students, uh, today inshallah we are going to talk about sympathomimetics also called adrenergic drugs we will start with just giving a little introduction about the sympathetic nervous system and the biosynthesis of catecholamines uh, this is our in the old to understand how this sympathetic nervous system this wonderful miracle from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can prepare us for uh, what's called fight or flight response and then we will end up with the, the catecholamine synthesis and release so uh, first uh, sympathetic nervous system uh, we talked before about these divisions of autonomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, and parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, we said about parasympathetic nervous system is referred to as rest and digest. Uh, however, sympathetic nervous system is referred to as fight or flight. It prepares, prepares the human being or animal into a fight or flight or a stressful situation okay and uh, by the way the body of our brain does not differentiate between dangerous situation and stressful situation so we are always recommended to uh, do what's called stress management to uh, minimize the uh, over stress and uh, the subsequent complications uh, so it prepares the body for emergency uh, situations. Uh, heart rate will increase. All what you need, everything you need for this fight or flight response, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you with. So what do you need? If you need for flight or flight response or also adjustment during exercise, what do you need? You need the heart rate to increase? Yes, because I need to pump more blood to the heart, to I'm sorry, to the uh, tissues, and specifically into the skeletal muscle and to the lung also for exchange of gas. Uh, what else you need? You need breathing to be rapid. Yes, there is no heart rate increasing heart rate without increasing the breathing uh, breathing rate, and also this breathing will be deep, so it will allow for more efficient gas exchange. Uh, then uh, this is one of the wonderful miracles of uh, the sympathetic nervous system. It works on the blood vessels in almost an uh, uh, opposite way. So in the, uh, it's kind of uh, recruiting or diverting the blood supply into the skeletal muscle. So it's kind of saying to the viscera and uh, you know, skin guys, can, can you know, do you mind if I take some blood from you and give it to the most urgent, uh, urgently needing uh, organ which is the skeletal muscle this is what happened exactly this one here blood flow to organs it includes alpha receptors so they will undergo vasoconstriction and here this it has beta receptor this will have vasodilation this will ensure muscle skeletal muscle specifically will receive enough blood supply to carry out whatever it needs to do so uh, here is like a, a nice cartoon about someone under very stress situation if you take it from up down okay so uh, what do you need during the stress situation you need myosis or midriasis you need my midriasis right so you watch your enemy you prepare prepare yourself for any uh, knock or any whatever okay if anything happens you are very prepared to uh, uh, in the CNS, there is CNS, some stimulation and some alertness. On the bronchi, there is a bronchodilatation. You need this. Heart rate increase. Force of contraction itself will increase. Blood pressure will increase to ensure all of these will ensure blood will go to the, uh, the urgent organ, including the skeletal muscle. And this blood should be oxygenated. Okay, So it will go to the lung to be oxygenated. So it is will provide these organs with oxygenated blood. Along blood also will carry the nutrients, including glucose. Right. Uh, uh, on the level of the skin, there is some perspiration. It's for energy because the, we know the sympathetic. I'm sorry, the uh, the, the, the sweat gland is uh, sympathetic, cholinergic. Do you remember? 
So the, the nerve is sympathetic, but released at the end acetylcholine and acetic muscarine. Uh, we'll talk later on the tutorial about the difference between perspiration here and in, in which the one that's induced by the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, uh, saliva will be just little and viscous. Uh, on the fat, okay, in the fat, there is an increase uh, in lipolysis, uh, fatty acid vibration. So now these fats will be used for the gluconeogenesis and glyco, and then uh, because the skeletal muscle needs more blood flow, will give you more blood flow. So there is vasodilation and there is glycogenolysis inside the skeletal muscle, glycogenolysis will convert glycogen into glucose in addition to gluconeogenesis, which will use these fats. Okay. The liver will include, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will do the gluconeogenolysis also and uh, gluconeogenesis, which will provide uh, glucose from non carbohydrate source, including fats. And the GIT, they will be decreased in peristaltic movement and there is increased in sphincter tone. You don't like during this stress response, during fight or flight, to go to the toilet, right? You're, gonna do, you're not going to do urination or defecation during this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared you for these stressful situations. So the, uh, there is no uh, need to go to the toilet. And the blood flow here will decrease because we need to ensure more blood supply go to the skeletal muscle. Uh, this kind of summarizes what I said now, the pupils will dilate because of the contraction of the dilator pupillae muscle, okay? In the, uh, in the parasympathetic nervous system, we say constrictor pupillae muscle or here by pupillary dilator muscle or dilator pupillae muscle. And the level of bronchi, bronchi will dilate and will enable uh, alveolar oxygen uptake to be increased. So this way what we need, okay? This actually is not due to the sympathetic innervation, uh, uh, but due to the release of adrenaline from adrenal medulla, which will activate beta-2 receptors in the pump. Uh, the heart rate will increase and the force of contraction, so the pumping efficacy will be high. Uh, blood vessels, at least, as we said, the, uh, the sympathetic nervous system will divert blood from the skin and the viscera to go to the skeletal muscle where it's more needed, okay? On the level of the GIT and renal tract, we see the relaxation of the wall, constriction of the sphincter, uh, salivary gland, little uh, secretion, and uh, sweating. We said there is some in little increased sweating, but we'll compare it with the uh, sweating released by uh, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system in our tutorial. Uh, blood sugar will increase due to glycogenolysis, breakdown of gluc glycogen into glucose, and uh, uh, gluconeogenesis formation of or synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate source, which is coming mainly from the lipolysis of the adipose tissue, uh, providing more fats that could be used and fuel this gluconeogenesis. Here you see, even in animals, when they are nervous, they are preparing to attack or being attacked, you see this here direction. And on the level of the male sex organ, you see ejaculation as compared to erection in the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, the neurohormones here uh, are mainly norepinephrine and epinephrine, in addition to acetylcholine, which goes from the preganglionic to the postganglionic, as we explained before, everywhere, right? In everything, we said all of the ganglia have acetylcholine and the receptor of nicotinic, if you remember. And uh, 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 the postganglionic neuron here releases norepinephrine, okay? And uh, in addition, epinephrine itself is secreted by the adrenal medulla, and norepinephrine is secreted by the nerve ending of the sympathetic or also called adrenergic nerve fiber. Uh, this little cartoon just uh, walks you uh, over the uh, sympathetic ganglionic synapse. If you look here, they look here, uh, action potential, action potential, sodium, potassium, sodium, potassium, sodium. And then uh, influx of calcium will facilitate the release of acetylcholine, and the acetylcholine will be released in the synapse and activate postganglionic neuron. Again, this is preganglionic neuron, and this is postganglionic neuron. So this is the ganglia here. Okay, this is the ganglia. Let me bring uh, my uh, laser pointer. I think this would be better. So this is the uh, this is the ganglia here. This is the preganglionic neuron. This is the postganglionic neuron. It's exactly a copy of what we have seen in the 
parasympathetic nervous system, no change, okay? Uh, then continue, consider this the coming uh, slide is kind of continuous from here, okay? So it's just following this one will be pulsing electric neuron, the part that was from the previous slide, okay? And it's coming here again, action potential, action potential, action potential, and here calcium will be in flux, uh, will be uh, inserted, and calcium will facilitate the release of uh, norepinephrine. Here in the pulsing ganglionic neuron, it will release norepinephrine. There in the parasympathetic nervous system, it was uh, acetylcholine. This will work on the, uh, uh, the adrenergic receptor, which is a G protein coupled receptor. In the previous one, just if I forgot, uh, it was a ligand gate ion channel. So again, let me recap this part. So now, action potential, calcium influx. Facilitation of release of acetylcholine from the nerve ending into the synapse. Acetylcholine will activate the uh, nicotinic receptor. If it's ganglia, this ganglia, it will be NN receptor. Okay, but this here is a nicotinic receptor. It's like a gate ion channel, which means upon the binding of acetylcholine to this receptor, there will be influx of sodium. Sodium will, you know, initiate so uh, action potential, action potential, action potential, action potential, continuous, right? Okay, uh, sodium, 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 calcium, sodium, potassium, sorry, and then uh, calcium influx, facilitation of the release of norepinephrine. This is the difference here, and actually here on adrenergic receptor, okay? And this adrenergic receptor, we said before, all adrenergic receptors, all adrenergic receptors are G protein coupled receptors, okay? Let us go into more details about this noradrenergic neurotransmitter, how this norepinephrine is synthesized, how epinephrine is synthesized. Let's start from the beginning from this uh, uh, hydroxylated amino acid tyrosine. Okay, it will be transferred into the nerve, noradrenergic nerve ending by sodium dependent carrier. It's called carrier A. It's almost similar to what we have seen in the parasympathetic nervous system, right? So tyrosine is, but not tyrosine there. Well, here, there it was choline. Here it's tyrosine. Tyrosine now is inside the nerve terminal. This tyrosine, uh, under the effect of tyrosine hydroxylase, will add hydroxyl group to this tyrosine. Tyrosine, tyrosine will be converted into dopa. Then it will be converted by enzyme called dopa decarboxylase. We'll see this later. Uh, it's converted into dopamine. Dopamine uh, will be converted. Uh, uh, so now dopamine will be uh, transferred into the physical by carrier B by carrier B, okay? So here carrier A, carrier B. So if you go uh, sequentially, it's easy, A, B, okay? So this comes before this. Uh, this carrier B is brought by drug uh, It transports to other, uh, like uh, norepinephrine, uh, and ATP, and uh, Dopamine inside this synaptic vesicle is converted into uh, norepinephrine, okay? And then norepinephrine itself, okay, will be released, but under the effect of action potential coming, as we said before, is coming, coming, action potential, action potential, sodium, potassium, sodium, potassium, sodium, potassium, sodium, okay, sodium here, and then uh, calcium influx, calcium will facilitate the release of uh, the fusion of this synaptic vesicle with the nerve terminal uh, and membrane, membrane, okay, and the release of uh, nor epinephrine, okay, uh, and some of the other co-transmitters, ATP, phosphate. This norepinephrine now has like about four choices. Uh, number one, this is what we need actually, is for it to activate the uh, uh, the postsynaptic receptor, whether it is alpha, beta, whatever. Okay, alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two, beta three receptors. Uh, this is number scenario number one. Number two, diffusion to the blood. Uh, number two, number three uptake back into the, the, the nerve thermal from which it came, right? And then uh, uptake into the post-synaptic cell, uptake two. So uptake one, uptake two. So again, division of the receptor, diffusion, uptake one, uptake two, okay? Another uh, thing here is autoreceptor. If it binds to autoreceptor, okay? There's heteroreceptor also. So it binds to a heter or autoreceptor, it will inhibit further release of norepinephrine. Okay, heteroreceptors, it's like effect of other 
neurotransmitter hormone on this one, and we'll talk and discuss this in detail on the tutorial. Okay, uh, in other tissues, okay, there are different, uh, like, uh, there is the, 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 this um, sequence of events can continue to another one more event or less one event. How? In the adrenal medulla, in the adrenal medulla. The synthesis is carried out one step further by enzyme, enzyme phenyl ethanolamine n methyltransferase which converts norepinephrine into epinephrine. Okay, we'll talk about this in the coming slide. Uh, that's why the adrenal medulla contains about 80% adrenaline. It's adrenal medulla. Adrenaline, easy, right? Adrenal medulla, adrenaline, good mnemonic. And uh, about 20% only from uh, is noradrenaline. From where noradrenaline comes, it comes from the, the uh, from the nerve uh, However, on the dopaminergic neurons, uh, the synthesis terminates with dopamine. Do you remember? We said tyrosine, dopa, dopamine. That's it in the dopaminergic neuron. It's not going to convert it into noradrenaline. So again, to uh, summarize this one, the whole synthetic pathway, tyrosine. This is tyrosine, this is hydroxylated amino acid, amino acid, this hydroxyl. Under the effect of the enzyme tyrosine, hydroxylase, 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 tyrosine, hydrox I added one hydroxyl group here, okay. Then under, so it's converted into dopa, and then under the effect of dopa decarboxylase, the, uh, this will remove this carboxyl group. So it will be dopamine, dopamine, dopa, dopamine. And then uh, dopamine under the effect of dopa beta hydroxylase, this is the amino group, this alpha car carbon, and this is the beta carbon. Dopamine hydroxylase will add hydroxyl group onto the beta carbon, so it will be converted into noradrenaline, also called the norepinephrine. In the adrenal medulla, this happens, this occurs in the adrenal medulla, okay? That this enzyme phenyl ethanolamine, this is phenyl ethanolamine, okay, and methyl transferase. They add, add a methyl group into this uh, nitrogen, so this one is now adrenaline. By the way, chemically, nor in chemical in chemistry means demethyl. So adrenaline here, if you remove the methyl group, it is nor adrenaline, okay. That's it for today. Thank you so much for your attention. See you inshallah later. Please enjoy and say subhanallah wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah al-Azim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.